Islam, 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 Islam. All praise due to Allah, highest one us to his holy and divine prophet. Prophet Noble Drew Ali, we want to give honors to Brother Jaleel Amawali Bay for giving us that powerful and beautiful demonstration. Islam, Islam. Islam. the brother said quite a few things that, you know, that kind of sparked, um, you know, some of the, the, uh, the lessons of the prophet in my mind, you know, as he was talking, he, you know, one of the things he talked about was tolerance, you know, someone give me a definition of tolerance. Y'all know I like to ask, que ask questions, so, you know, we're going to be a little interactive. Somebody give me a what, what is tolerance? It's one word. Our rise giving all praise to our Father God of God and His holy and divine prophet, no control. That's one word. You recognize me. Tolerance would be what you would be willing to put up with, or perhaps what you would be open to managing in your life. That's one. That's one. Anybody else? Tolerance. What's tolerance? Patience. Patience. It's love. Anybody else? There's a lot of adults in here. I'm pretty sure many of y'all have different demonstrated tolerance, especially if you got children. Discipline. Discipline. It's love. Okay. So when we talk about tolerance, as the brother said, you know, being willing to, uh, you know, accept a, a particular thing, right? Being able to ha have the patience enough to be able to allow a particular behavior, right? To be able to allow a particular, um, you know, um, accept something, you know, within your life that, that may not be something that you personally would, 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 um, would demonstrate yourself, you know, for lack of a better words. Islam Morris? Islam. So having tolerance, you know, uh, in many ways, as the brother uh, said, you know, is having patience. And what's that old saying that people say? Patience is a what? Virtue. Patience is a virtue. Where else do we see that word virtue? Mm. The higher self. <laughs> the higher self is the what? The mother of the virtues and the harmonies of life and breeds justice, mercy, love, and right. See, those are some of the things that the higher self breeds. But it also breeds patience. Because patience is a virtue. Islam was? Islam. So do we have enough patience with our people? Islam? Islam? Do we have enough patience to be able to see the things that happens in the cares of the world? Because see, I'm, I'm saying this because the brother said that, you know, he's not a parent yet. But if you're a Moorish American Muslim, you're a parent, Mo. <laughs> you're a parent, Mo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Why? Because you are the custodians of the historical legacy of our people. You are the custodian of the keys that was passed down to you by way of, by way of Allah through our ancient fathers by his prophet. So you have the keys to uplift fallen humanity. Thus, you are a parent by way of Allah, by way of your prophet. Islam was? Islam. You are the president of a particular organization, correct? Yes, sir. You are a parent, Mo. Thank you, sir. All of y'all are parents, even the children. Because they have peers that don't have these lessons. But they have these lessons. They have the lessons to understand the difference between truth and falsehood. What is truth? Truth is all. Truth is all. What is all? All is Allah. What are some other names we give to truth? Holy breath. Holy breath. What is the holy breath? Great. Good. All we can say. It's all we can say. Why? Because we can't contain it. We can't put it in a box. Islam? Islam. My definition of truth, or my definition of holy breath, or my definition of Allah may be different from person to person. But we're still talking about the one universal creator. We're still talking about a holy breath. Islam was? Islam. All we can say is that it is great, it is good, it was, it is, and is ever more to be. Amen. Evermore. It's the everlasting gospel. Islam was? Islam. The everlasting gospel is a saving power that comes from Allah through our ancient fathers by his prophet. Mo, y'all know, you know the responsibility that you have with that information? See, when you have the truth, you now have a responsibility to that truth. Islam. You have a responsibility to it. Islam? Islam. Because now, because you know, you are held up to a higher, a higher standard. 
Islam Moors? Islam. See, the Moors, the Moors flag, it's the standard. See, when I do my, my opening, I said, you know, I give honors to the Moorish standard, the red flag with the five-pointed green star in the center. Each point represents what? Love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. These are the highest five principles known to man. The highest. And so if they are the highest, then you must be held to a higher standard. You have the truth. But what are you doing with the truth? Islam boys? Wow. See, the truth is all and all is Allah, but the Allah, <laughs> what is what are all? <laughs> pardon yourself. See, I feel like I'm going to Sunday school now. What also is the higher self? It is Allah and man. Islam. So, what does that mean? You don't have to look outside of yourself for a savior. You don't have to look outside of yourself for Allah. But what else is within you? You got a lower self too. And what is the lower self sometimes called? Satan. Yep, sometimes. Sometimes it's called devil. Sometimes it's called Lucifer. Islam. So we must know our higher self and our lower self. See, it's one thing to know Allah. As the brother demonstrated, he said, without a foe, a soldier never knows his strength. So yeah, you can, you can know your higher self all day long. You can, you can have the information about, you know, the mother of the virtues. You, you know, you can recite all these holy and divine instructions. But if you're tested by your lower self and you fail that test, then do you really know? No, sir. If man would know, he must himself he, be what he knows. Islam. Islam. Islam, boys? Islam. See, <laughs> I'm just talking, I'm just, you know, I'm just saying what the prophet said, boy. I ain't using my own words. Right. You had a prophet come to you, an American-born prophet. Come on. You don't have to look to the east for nobody come on. to save you. You had an American-born prophet to bring you the lessons to help you save yourself. Wow. Islam, boys? Wow. He said, if I can get you to thinking, you will save yourselves. See, thought is the cause of it all. So when we talk about the actions of the soul, it's four of them. What's the first one? Thinking. Thinking. Thinking is the first action of the soul. That's the first part of the decision-making process. Islam, boys? Islam. So if I can get you to thinking first, then you'll be on the way to saving yourself. See, thinking, understanding, reasoning, and willing. Call these not the soul, but its actions. Islam? Islam. These are the actions of the soul. So when I, when I think first, then I can properly develop a, a, a you know, an understanding, right? A solid understanding. Why? Because I thought first. See, oftentimes we react to things without thinking. Islam boys? Islam. See, it's like an addict, right? And this is not to speak, you know, against anybody who struggled with any kind of addiction. But part of the addiction is that there's no thought process involved. It's just response. It's a trigger, and it's just a response. There's no thinking involved, right? Why? Why is that? Because there's a disconnection between the higher self and the lower self. See what did what did what did uh what did the sorry what did the lower self say to the higher self at one time when he met him? I'm sorry. What did the higher self say to the lower self at one time when he met him? Where are you going, Satan? And what did the lower self say to the higher self? I'm going to and fro the earth seeking whom I may devour. See, the lower self goes to and fro the earth seeking whom it may devour. Where's the earth? What earth is, is, is it talking about? Self. Self. It's talking about you. Within you. And so if we know that, then how do we, how do we develop the ability to conquer or to bound the lower self? By studying self. By studying yourself by knowing the things that trigger you to respond to external stimuli. Islam. Islam, boys? Islam. See, nothing really exists. <coughs> nothing, really, nothing really exists outside of you. Why? Because anything that is made, there's going to be a time where it's going to be unmade. It's measured up by time. These are the illusions of the world, right? The things we see with these, these physical things we call eyes, these are, not really, these are not really not eyes. Y'all know that, right? Mm. You know, it's a manifest. These are messengers, 
right? You see something, and it sends a message back to <laughs> where you process that message. And you develop a what? An image. See, man is made in the image and after the likeness of God Allah. Right? Well, what's the image that's made within you? What is, the, what is your image of yourself? How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as, you know, as sons and daughters of Allah? Right? Or do you see yourself as something lesser than? And if you do, who taught you that? Who gave you that image? Islam was? Islam. See, there's a certain people who put this uh, European image with a blonde haired guy with some blue eyes and told you to worship him. And so you worship your God in that image. Islam was? Islam. I'm not speaking radical. I'm just using some truth here. I know that truth sometimes is radical and agitating. Right? But do you have courage enough for truth? Do you have courage enough for truth? Do you have courage enough for Allah? Because the truth is, all, then all is Allah, right? You see, who made you? Allah. Okay. And who is Allah? Allah is the father of the universe. So can we see him? No. Hmm. Where's the nearest place we can meet him? In the heart. So do you have to go to your heart to meet Allah? No. <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> I was. <laughs> right? So because what is the heart? Say it again. Ooh, okay. I like that. I would say the heart is the lock. Because you need the key to unlock it. To open it up. So that happiness can flow from it. Come on, man. See, you were given the keys. Let me go to the Holy Quran and the Morris Science Temple of America. Let me find what chapter. <laughs> uh, if anybody has some extra, oh, okay. Oh, that, the Morris Americans, they got some. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Bear with me. Go to chapter 45. And that's XLV, which is on page 57 of this particular copy. I don't know who has. Page 57, yes. And it's titled, The Divine Origin of the Asiatic Nations. Islam. Islam. Hmm? I was thinking about that. I was saying that you were just reading. Okay, Islam. <laughs> hey, you say Islam when you made it? Islam. 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 Says the divine origin of the Asiatic nations. The fallen sons and daughters of the Asiatic nations of North America need to learn to love instead of hate and to know of their higher self and lower self. This is the uniting of the Holy Quran of Mecca for teaching and instructing all Moorish Americans, ETC. I want to stop there because the brother touched on something about the uniting of the Moorish Science Temple of America. Said that the Prophet Noble Drew Ali <clears throat> is the founder of the Moorish Science Temple of America, and he's also the founder of the uniting of the Moorish Science Temple of America. Islam. Islam. See, during the, during the early nineteen, uh, well, nineteen twenty nine, when the Prophet, you know, uh, passed form, even right before he passed form, that was a, you know a split that happened within the movement, right? Um, and so, and thus, as a result, we have the the several different. Um, factions of Moorish Americans. Islam Moors? Islam. But see, the Prophet said that. <laughs> see, now I'm about to be jumping around. Yeah, I got me. I ain't gonna do that. Okay. Islam. Mm. Actually, I'm not gonna do that. Okay. So, anyway, the Prophet said, <laughs> the prophet said that he's also the founder of the Moorish Science Temple of America. Islam Moors? Islam. So, of the uniting of the Moorish Science Temple of America, pardon me. Um, and so despite what, you know, what has happened throughout, you know, throughout the time, uh, throughout the dispensation of time that the Prophet, you know, passed form and up until now, those things were ordained to happen. They were prophesied. They're right here in your Holy Quran. Islam Moors? 
So sometimes we get frustrated with the things that are going on and, you know, we, we lose faith. We lose hope. But hope is the beacon light. So if you lose hope, how can you find your way to that destination that is not uncertain nor unknown? Because what is a, what is a light? What do, what do we use a light for? To see. That's love. See, in the darkness, <laughs> the light shines. Will you shine in the darkness? Or will you disappear? See, you must be a light to your people. When we go out and we, we, we leave outside of Mecca, outside of the Morristown Temple of America, it's dark out there. But you, have, you must shine. Why? Because you have the truth. See, light is also representative of truth, right? And so you must shine in the dark. Islam, Morris? So will you shine? Will you be the truth? Will you be the message that you bring? Islam, Morris? I want to go to instruction two. It says, the key of civilization was and is in the hands of the Asiatic nations. What's that next two words? The Moorish. The Moorish. The Moorish. All right? Who were the ancient Moabites and the founders of the holy city of Mecca. <laughs> the Egyptians who were the, Hamathite, the Hamathites <clears throat> and of the direct descendant of Mizraim, the Arabians, the seed of Hagar, Japanese and Chinese. The Hindus of India, the descendants of the ancient Canaanites, Hittites, and Moabites from the land of Canaan the Asiatic nations and countries in North, South, and Central America, the Moorish Americans and Mexicans in North America, Brazilians, Argentinians, and Chileans in South America, Colombians, Nicaraguans, and the natives of San Salvador in Central America, ETC. All of these are what? Wow. The Turks are the true descendants of Hagar, who are the chief protectors of the Islamic creed of Mecca beginning from Muhammad the first, the founder of the uniting of Islam by the command of the great universal God Allah. See, we keep seeing this, this uniting portion happening. Islam Islamors? Islam. See, this uniting, see, the, <laughs> the first uniting that's mu that must happen is between what? Self. What, specifically? The higher self and the lower self. See. In order to manifest these things, you have to manifest it within yourself first. That's not more? In order to manifest it, you have to know it. You have to know it. You have to study it. Islam? Islam. You have to be in control of it. Islam, Islam. So this uniting, it continues to talk about the uniting of Islam. The brother talked about uh, we measure time by cycle ages. We've seen these things happen over and over again throughout time. And when we study these cycle ages, we're able to make the, the necessary uh, adjustments. Islam? Islam. To correct the things that, that continues to happen. Islam, Morris? Islam. See, we have, a, we have a infatuation with our lower selves for some reason. Wow. You know, we like to let it loose sometimes. <laughs> you know, we, we, we addicted to it. You know, and then because of that, we create havoc within our own lives, within our, you know, the, the relationships we have with our brothers and sisters. Because, well, I ain't gonna let them do that to me. I ain't gonna let them say nothing like that. That's weakness. Islam? Islam. Islam. See, when we, when we feel like we just gotta got you, when we feel like we just gotta respond to something, respond to someone else's lower self, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's weakness. And we have an entire chapter on weakness. <laughs> Study weakness. And figure out which parts of that apply to you. Islam. I'm just saying. Because nothing exists outside of yourself. And so if someone else's lower self is bothering me, there's a problem within me. Islam, Morris? Because it says that instruction, instruction one, it says the fallen sons and daughters of the Asiatic nations of North America <clears throat> need to learn to love instead of hate. And what? And to know of the higher self and the lower self. Islam, Morris? So... Me, me mastering myself, right? We always, you know, I'm the captain of my fate. Right? All that other stuff, you know. What is it called? How's it go? I'm the captain of my fate, master of my soul. Master of my soul, right? If I'm, if I'm really those things, then it'll show. Wow. Right? See, what is, what is this, Grand uh, Sheik? You know, who is to say that, you know, that they're faithful and, and not be tested? Or? Exactly. Uh, you know, that's what the Quran of Mecca says. Do you think that you 
will say that you have faith and not the test. So your tests are going to be there. There's no such thing as living without tests. Mm. Right. Islam boys? Islam. Why? Because the tests are there for you to grow from. That's right. yes. You're going to fail sometimes. Yep. But are you going to continue to fail the same test over and over again? Islam boys? Islam. See, study the test. Reflection is the business of man. Right? right? Sense of his status is first duty. So, you know, I just talked about that, right? So, as, you know, the, the, the more we study... The, you know, the more we reflect and study certain situations that we put ourselves in or that we find ourselves in, the better we can, the better the outcome can be next time. Islam boys? Oh. It's the simple teachings that we ignore sometimes. The little things. You know, when I played basketball, my coach used to say, you know, we do the little things very bad. This is why we lose. That's right. That's what he said. Right? And then we start paying attention to the little things, right? And then we start winning, right? The little things like taking a charge. I know some people don't, know, you know, play basketball you know, or diving on the floor for the basketball, right? The little things, because everybody, when they play basketball, all they want to do is go and shoot threes like Steph Curry, you know, influenced by the TV, right? And stuff that they see on the videos on their cell phones, right? I want to do, I want to do it like such and such. How about you do it like yourself? Study yourself and perfect it yourself and do it like you. That's a lot of boys. Stop calling yourself Jordan. You ain't that man. Right? <laughs> Probably won't reach that, you know, uh, just say it. You ain't LeBron. Be yourself and no one else. No one else. Islam. Islam boys? I'm sorry, I knew you had it. Islam. 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 Two points, when you said that uh, we're, we're infatuated with, with our lower selves, you know, that, that reminds me of, of uh, the, uh, the uh, scripture in the Bible that talks about the, uh, the path leading to destruction, mm. which is broad and spacious. That's right. And many travel that road, mm. the path leading to, to mm. everlasting life is broad and narrow and narrow. That's right. You know, and uh, to the second point, you know, we talked about the example of the basketball. I know mm. I was in the band, mm. and we try to play like Dizzy Gillespie, mm. and John Fainis and all this, <laughs> but you got you to get your chromatic skills. You got to start, you got to get your faces down first. Right. <laughs> it's love. It's love. So, you know, it's the little things. Islam boys? Islam. So you know, you never know where you, <clears throat> you never know where there is a lesson to be learned. But if you're disinterested in a lesson, then how can you learn it? Islam boys? Islam. You know, all praise is due to Allah. You know, high is one is to his holy and divine prophet, Prophet Noble Ali, because you know he brought us a, a self-help manual. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's and it's very unassuming. It's little, it's small, mm -hmm. but it has the wisdom of the gods in it. Islam boys, you know the wisdom of the gods, boy. And it, you know when you read it, oh, you know, you know, mm -hmm. you know, our people, ah, oh, let's talk about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but our teacher says that Jesus means justice. Hmm. So is it talking about a man? Okay. I mean, I mean it could be. And if it wasn't, then so what? Right. Right. Because will you? <laughs> Love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, these are the highest five principles known to man. Right? You see, those principles, they manifest themselves within man. It says that Allah speaks to man through man. Right? It's the only way we can hear Allah. You know, I hear, you know we hear a lot of people say, oh, you know, I, you know, I had a conversation with Allah, and, or a conversation with God, and, you know, he told me this. <laughs> okay, cool, you know. But did anybody else hear it? So who did you hear from? Small still voice. Stop, the small still voice. That speaks where? In the heart or within. Right? Yeah, you had a conversation with Allah. Because the nearest place to meet him is in the heart. <laughs> Islam was? Islam. So when we actually realize that, we recognize the only reality. Right? Allah is the only reality. It's the only thing that really exists is Allah. Why? Because he is all. It's love. All right? Everything else is measured up by time. There you go. Everything else is measured up by time. Anything that has a beginning must pass away. Islam always? See, man is not the body nor the soul, but a spirit part of Allah. So man has no beginning nor end. As long as Allah lives, man cannot die. 
Were we really taught that growing up? Who wasn't taught that? We was taught that, you know, you was going to die and you was going to go to heaven. Yeah. Or you was going to go to hell. Yeah. Based on what? Based on your, your, your works and your deeds in life. Mm -hmm. Islam was? But Jesus said that, you know, look not, neither here nor there, for the kingdom of heaven is within you. He said the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven is, should be where God lives, right? I, you know, I, I'm just saying. So that must be, that must mean that you can have your heaven or your hell mm -hmm. right here on earth. Islam, Islam was? Islam. Based on what? Excellent. Based on your thoughts, your words, and your deeds. Islam was? Islam. So you start with thought first. So what are you thinking? What are your thoughts like? Are your thoughts divine? Or are your thoughts of the lower self? Are your thoughts based on hatred, slander, lewdness, murder, theft, and everything that harms? Islam? Islam. That's hell. Because heaven and hell are states of mind. Right? So what is your state of mind? See, when you're faced with the foe, when you're faced with that test, if your state of mind is in hell, probably going to fail the test. Islam or us? Most of us have gone to school, right? Whether it's, you know, grade school or college or whatever the case. And your teacher, you know, you, go, you, you have certain lessons and things, right? And the lessons are to prepare you for a test. And in order to pass the test, you have to do what? You gotta study. It's the same thing with life. In order to pass the test in life, you gotta study yourself. Islam. Islam, Islam. So are you writing the lessons on the tablets of your heart? Mm. Wow. I hear you shit. Are you writing the lessons on the tablet of your heart? Islam, Islam. Islam. So, you know, these are holy and divine lessons, and you must study them and apply them to yourself so that you can pass the test, because there are going to be tests. There are going to be road bumps. There are going to be times where you're going to get frustrated. But in those times, do you have the lessons to call, <clears throat> to call on the holy breath, to think, right, to use the actions of the soul? And the first one is thinking, so that you can understand the situation that you're in. And once you have an understanding, you can reason with yourself. Reason you know, the reasoning between the higher self and the lower self so that you can will out the right result. Uh, right result. Islam, Islam. Islam. Thinking, understanding, reasoning, and willing. Islam? Islam. So I want to read, uh, read something. I had to write it down because it's in my phone and my phone is on Facebook Live, so. <laughs> so I wrote it down before the meeting. But um, this is an article from the Morris God uh, newspaper, which was... Um, Articles printed, you know, during the prophet's time, uh, in, in 1928, and 1929, um, and I don't know if this article had a, a title, but I just want to read uh, something because oftentimes we we are faced with trying to explain the purpose of the Moorish Science Temple of America, the purpose of the Moorish Divine National Movement, as you know, as it was given or laid down by the Prophet Noble Ali. and you know, this is just you know uh, a short um, perspective, I would say, you know, on what you know, this movement is, is designed or, you know, to give an explanation on the movement. Um, it states, we of the Moorish Science Temple of America, like countless other American citizens, know that we must live together here in America in harmony, friendship, and goodwill, whatever our race or creed may be. It is only from a purely religious standpoint, it seems at this time, that we differ from a large number of our fellow Americans. We believe in and foster the Muslim religion. We believe in the principles of its teachings insofar as they can be adopted to American life. We feel that the Christian religion is all right for those who prefer it. In America, religious freedom is granted all under the Constitution. Part self is guaranteed all under the Constitution. We are interested in freeing ourselves and our children from our greatest plight economic slavery. We believe this can be done by encouraging, patronizing, and establishing our own business enterprises and cultivating our own acres of land. We welcome into our foes men and women of our group of all sections, all trades, occupations, and professions of sound mind 
and good character. We are friends and servants of humanity. We are dedicated to the purpose of elevating the moral, social, and economic status of our people. We have set about to do this through a wide and comprehensive program embodying the principles of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Islam? Islam. So, you know, some of the things I wanted uh, you know, to, to point out is that it talks about, it says, it is only from a purely religious standpoint, it seems at this time that we differ from a large number of our fellow Americans. You know, oftentimes we think that we're, we're different. As Moorish Americans, when we come in and we proclaim our nationality, get this, uh, this fez, fez headdress, we get, you know, uh, you know crowned with our, our, our turbans, you know, for our sisters. You know, at that point, we, we you know, all of a sudden, we, we, you know, better than, you know, we, we jump up on our high horse, you know. Um, or a high, high camel, I'm sorry. That's right. You know, and then we look down on our people with scorn. Mm. You know, you're, you're no better. Come on, Mom. <laughs> Make a yeah. yeah, you're no better than the next person. Mm. Right? Because to even think that way, right? says that there is no humility within your heart, right? Says that, you know, when we talk about tolerance, right, the brother said, you know, patience. How can you look down on your brother and sister, right? As if you are all knowing, mm -hmm. as if you are, you know, perfected in the sense of never done, you know, done no wrong or whatever the case may be, right? As if, right? None of us are no better than our weakest link. We can only move as far as our weakest link will allow us to move. And so we have an obligation to uplift the weakest link. Islam Morris? Islam. What is the purpose of the Morris Science Temple of America? For the uplifting of fallen humanity. For the uplifting of fallen humanity. Islam Morris? Islam. So we don't have the right to look down on any of our people. Islam, Morris. Islam. What have we accomplished as a people, right? What have we accomplished? What have I accomplished as an individual? What have I done? What have I co contributed to the uplifting and the building of my community? Islam? Islam. See, again, reflection is the business of man. And I have to self-reflect. I have to continue to evaluate myself, right? before I go, you know, talking about what other people are or are or not doing. Or, you know, measuring other people's character. Things like that. I'm not saying that we can't, again, we have a responsibility to hold each other accountable. And I'm the first one to say, if I'm doing something wrong, please let me know. Because where I don't see myself, others do more plainly, most plainly. That's my morals. So if I'm doing something wrong, please pull me to the side and tell me. Islam Islam. If I offend you in any way, please pull me to the side and say so. We're adults, so we should be able to have adult conversation. Islam. And when we do that, our children learn how to do it as well. Islam. And we have to be the message that we bring so that they can learn from us. Islam Islam. Islam. But if we're demonstrating the lower self, <laughs> lack of a better word, <laughs> right? Then they're going to learn. You are your, your child's first teacher. That also goes with organizations. If you're the leader of an organization, you lead by example. Islam Morris? Islam. So, you know, these lessons are to be applied. Islam, they're, be, they're to be applied to ourselves. They're, be, you know, they're to be taught you know, to our children and things like that. Islam Morris? Islam. So I just wanted to read, uh, read that, you know, that, uh, that portion real quick. Um, I, I just want to, um, she's not going to like this, but you know, Sister Auntie Bay went into the phone booth and came back out. She came out, I was like, whoa! <laughs> so, you know, I, I often say <clears throat> there's nothing more beautiful than a, than a, a woman with a turban. It's love! It's more beautiful. I'm just gonna, you know, I don't say stuff like that. You know, but it, it just, you know, it warms my heart because we know what that represents. Islam. Islam. 
And when we talk about the standards, we know, you know, again, holding somebody, someone to a higher standard, right? And so when I see that, I see a higher standard. Not saying that she had a low standard before. She's, you know, she's already presented herself as a great person. But what that represents, Islam, the, the fez headdress, what that represents. See, you're supposed to wear the fez and the turban even when you're not wearing the fez and turban. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to demonstrate that degree even when you're not, even in private. The prophet said he was working in, in, in public as well as private. Islam was. Islam was? Mm -hmm. So you have to be the message that you bring even when you're by yourself. Islam wars? Islam. Because if nobody else knows, Allah knows. Mm. And the nearest place to me, Allah is in the heart. Mm. So you can't escape him. Islam. Can't hide from him. <laughs> Islam wars? Islam. So all praise due to Allah, highest one is to his holy and divine prophet, Prophet Noble Jurali.